Hey, look, it's that knife I was jealous of all game. Because it's unbreakable instead of some sort of weird scavenged together shank. It's just sitting there on the title screen. I don't know if I noticed that before. Sure would have been nice if Joel had that. Left behind. Play a side story set during the events of The Last of Us. So I have never played this. I've never seen this. I don't know crap about it, except for the fact that it features Riley, which admittedly, the end of The Last of Us kind of gives us information about how, of what might happen during this DLC as a result. And yet it's recommended you play this after the main game. So I guess it's supposed to be less of a shock of what happens with Riley and more like a contextualization, I suppose, or something. We'll see. But this is all new to me. This is the blind part of this playthrough all of a sudden. There's gonna be a shift. Would you like- No, I don't need tutorial pop-ups. It has been like half of a week. Hard mode. Let's stick with it. Let's be consistent. What? Fireflies? Get down! Oh. Who the fuck are these guys? No, it was kind of awesome. You're not gonna kill me, are you? I haven't seen you, and I don't even know how long. 45 days. Well, 46, technically. Wanna know what I've been up to? All this time, I thought you were dead. Yeah. Here. No way. Still no roommate? I had to sleep under Liz for three years and you know how bad that girl smelled. You're a firefly. <laughs> you still have it up. What? What are you doing? Make sure I don't get caught with a firefly in my room. Relax. There are no soldiers on the entire floor. Here, congrats. Hey. Are we cool? Are we cool? I disappeared and you're mad. Yeah. And I owe you an explanation. Let's get out of here and I'll tell you all about it. It's almost morning. And I have military drills. You know, where we learn how to kill fireflies. Put some pants on and let's go. <sighs> I'm so dumb. Oh, come on. When have we ever gotten into trouble? <sighs> Shit. <sighs> come on, give me something. <sighs> Fuck! Oh, here we go. I'll put you on your side. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. 
I should buy us some time. Find something to stitch you up, okay? Callus, keep an eye on him. I'll be back in a flash. That's not how I thought this was going to go. The game takes... It, okay, yeah, I mean, the description says it takes place during The Last of Us. But, like, the cutscene, certainly... Or just the existence of a character, a younger Ellie, in the promo stuff, like... I thought it was all going to be about those two. I wonder if we're going to ever play as Ellie and Riley. If that's going to be a thing, or if I'm just going to be... Here and then get flashbacks that slowly contextualize Riley, but that's... Even that's weird. Okay. Well, it answers the question of why you don't want- why you don't want to play this game... this DLC before the main game. Because straight up, here's the whole winter chapter being expanded upon, apparently. Weird. I almost wish it was just jammed into the main game. And you could just- just sort of naturally transition from the main game to the DLC and back to the main game, but maybe it doesn't all fit that way well enough. Uh, we're gonna be doing some fighting around here. Look at those walls. Oh yeah. That's, that's a cover system. So we're trying to patch up Joel, because he was taken out, because he hit the rebar. Hello. Oh shit, that's a... Those are clicker sounds. Somewhere. How you doing on... Okay, so we're, we're back to previous rules. I hear something. I also heard clickers, I thought, but I also hear something like rat rustling around. The flag. Clickers don't seem to be getting any closer. I got drills in the morning. You know, where we learn to kill fireflies. So we might finally get some context about how the fireflies... How the fireflies fit into the overall larger world. What the military feels like and does really beyond having a quarantine zone set up in the very first chapter of the game and then never coming up again. Which is more or less how the, ch how the main campaign went. I think once we left the mil military behind, we never heard or saw of that them again. And it just what didn't seem relevant. Aside from the echoes of their past existence being what... Like, the supposedly, the, at least the people thought the military was withholding food and starving them out. And that's what led to the uprising in the other location, but that was all in the past. The only live military, I think, was in the prologue area. Where we did kill some of them. You can see more in the in the main game. Ellie was not prepared for the the what the hell the man I killed a naughty dog production. It's just straight up listed there. The uh, in the in in the main game, Ellie was not ready to kill people, even when they even when they fought the soldiers that were going to kill Ellie for being infected or whatever. Uh, she thought they were just going to, like, knock them out or distract them, and then Tess and Joel killed them all, and she wasn't prepared for that, and that freaked her out. Are you gonna point me at this? I was about to walk at that, too. Just poking around. There's a lot of environment to look at, which apparently doesn't have anything in it. Ooh. You can also go there. Now we have the additional context. Oh, we might need to get the combo. You probably can't break that off. Oh, what does it say? I need- yeah, I know that. That's how locks work. Hey, a brick. 
now we know that part of her hesitation might also come, not just come from like normal human, hey, uh, let's not murder people feelings, but also the fact that she apparently has military training and she has a direct connection to that group. In addition to the normal squeamishness towards, you know, killing humans that people usually feel. Thank you for visiting Weston's. I did not think we were going to be playing Winter, uh, Winter Chapter Ellie. What the hell? Did you just swallow the pills and leave the bottle? God. <laughs> the bottle's just empty. I'm sure they'll make. I'm sure they'll do something worthwhile with it. But on on my immediate reaction, I'm actually a little frustrated. We're playing as Winter Come Ellie on. right now. Everything's picked clean. There's a chance they'll surprise us and do something really cool with it, but my first re reaction is I feel like we can imply really strongly exactly how went, uh, the off-camera chapter of Winter Ellie went be before we pick up with her hunting. There's a lot of obvious elements of desperation that come up when you're trying to deal with the fact that you are a small child and there, or a teenager and there is an adult man that you can't take care of because he's getting an infection and also you can't even carry him or anything and you're just totally screwed. Meanwhile, I really want to get back to Riley. I want to learn what the hell's going on in that timeline or that that part of this timeline. Anything cool? The pharmacist. Maybe he's got something on him. Please read. Pharmacist went crazy and attacked me. I had him pretty hard. He's unconscious. Locked him in the American print in the American Prince's store next door. Please get him help. Combination of them numbers. So we got the combination now. It says he's crazy. The question is, is he alive? Because if he's alive or not, is is what affects whether the craziness is even relevant or not. For storytelling purposes, I'm guessing there's nothing around here, but I'm still going to check. There could still be other things that aren't related to our actual goal of helping Joel, but can help me other way in other ways. Oh, come on. Ah, of course. For pharmacy employees only. Well, then it's a good thing I know where I can find a pharmacist. I almost said pharmacy and pharmacy. I'm like, I'm already at the pharmacy. You idiot. Even if he's dead, I can get the key or whatever off of him. Please don't attack me immediately. Oh, it's going to be the clickers I heard. I bet you. It's going to be where I heard the clickers from. Oh, spores. Wait, why are you not immediately recoiling in horror from the fact that what looked like spores came out? Oh, wait, never mind, sorry. I had to remind myself we're not playing as prequel Ellie, we're playing as winter Ellie, so here she already knows she's immune. But she's reacting to spores because there could be an enemy here. Spores is scary because there could be an enemy around here. And that's bad. American princess. God, it's, she's a nightmare. Unmake her, please. Fake history that didn't exist, because this is not a real anything. Yeah, nope. We're nowhere near crafting things. Oh boy. Come out, come out, little buddy. Oh, that's a lot of spores. Oh, wow. Where does the biomass for all of that even come from? What's what's using it as nutrients to grow that big? Or were those old bodies originally that it flowered out from? That's a lot of goddamn 
living tissue. Oh, goody. So yeah, as expected, the pharmacist appears to be a clicker. It's easy, I can do this. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Oh, man. Don't come to life. Don't come to life. <sighs> Nothing. <sighs> Where are they? Oh, the key. Okay. Oh, fuck! God damn it! Alright. Key. Pharmacy. Let's do it. Yes, let's leave this room. Fuck. Of course. Of course. She has the knife, though. With a knife like that, I would have preemptively stabbed that body. Because, fuck no, am I not just gonna reach at it? Damn it, oh no, there's so many things. Is it this one? Oh, that's the pharmacist that's... We found dead there. Making faces. Think about me while I'm off. I'll be missing you. But not too much. Laura. And now they're probably both dead. Well, he is dead. Sounds like there might be more than one. It's hard to be sure. Thankfully, it's a clicker, and this is a very wide open area, and there's no runners around, so we're good. Wait for him to casually wander off in the complete wrong direction. I'll be way worse off when I go in here, if he decides to follow me. If she's got that nice, in invincible knife, she should be using that more often. Oh no, what if it doesn't alarm? Should I really expect these places to be powered though? Yes. No. We did it. <laughs> Don't kick things loudly. Oh. It's clicker territory. A military helicopter. That's gotta have something. Hang in there, Joel. Not a lot going for us here. I would close the door behind us. Since it seemed like that was the only way to get here. You don't want to get clickered. Ooh. A little bit of sugar for one of those smoke bombs I never used the entire game. I went the entire game without using a single smoke bomb or a single flamethrower shot, I think. That wasn't really the plan. It's just... I just didn't have that many major zombie encounters after that point. If I had if I had a part... If I had a moment like in Half-Life where you're guarding an L... Where you, like, you have to like... You press an elevator button, but the elevator takes too goddamn long to show up, so you have to fight waves of enemies coming at you. Like, that would be a flamethrower moment. But the cu the couple of remaining zombie encounters I had in the game at that point, I mostly stealthed through. Not this way. The flamethrower was not the best fit. I was planning on switching to it eventually while taking out all the humans in the final level, but, uh... The, my proximity bombs and whatnot were actually rather effective. And then before long, and they also they also give you a new gun for that chapter that's kind of a no-brainer to use. In that it no-brains your enemies rather quickly. What was that sound from? It was a knocking. There's something addictive about the aesthetic of just looking at modern society and its fallen form. Stuff falling apart. Snow and vines and nature in parts and areas it shouldn't be in. Shows up in here, near automata, and pretty much anywhere else. And it's, it's used so much because it's just, it's, it's an addictive concept. contradicts what we know about how our society works and the per the the apparent like permanence of everything which is largely imagined 
we like to think we get used to how our life works and we like to think of everything in our life as being rather permanent and many things we see as just being things that had always been that way but then we turn around and look at these things and we realize oh shit actually historically if you go back that thing that i felt like has been a part of society forever uh started 30 years ago or something really weird moments I think, I'm trying to remember if this is a valid example or not, or if it's real, but one of the things that comes to mind is the idea of, like, was it under God being added to the, to the Pledge of Allegiance in the United States? Like, if I remember correctly, that just wasn't there. And then one day they added it, relatively recently, and then, and then nowadays if you talk about removing it, people will be like, but history, or it's, or it's part of American culture, and it's like, it, it, it was added. It wasn't here most of the time. Ah, no sutures. Well, at least I can use this. I think that's the example. It might be something similar that I'm mixing it up with. Chief Warrant Officer Larry Caulfield died bravely this afternoon. We were flying back to the QZ when our patient turned. It must have been spores because none of us saw the bite. The patient broke through the restraints and fell upon our pilot, W.O. Sean Brendan. Even with the helicopter spinning out of control, Officer Call Field fought the in infected patient, saving our lives. We crashed in a rural Colorado mall. Private Eugene Ellis, Officer Call Field, and I were the only survivors. In subduing the infected, Officer Call Field was bitten on the neck. He immediately showed us the bite and accepted his fate. I executed the infection protocol before Officer Call Field could turn into infected. May he rest in peace, Captain Reagan Francis. 4th Infantry Division, Denver QZ. An example of somebody not hiding their bite. There's a lot of examples where they super don't do that. Seems like it didn't work out for him either, though. I assume he's the one that wrote that. He was documenting the death of the person that saved his life, but he died here in full uniform. Possibly the same day, probably the same, yeah, right, because that's what the helicopter is. That, whose pilot has been now named. Oh boy, point of no return, you bet your ass something bad's gonna happen. Oh boy. Chest high walls for cover, there's a few things going on. And we can't come back up. Hurry! Up here! Oh man. That was close, huh? You got fast there. I'm impressed. Thanks. Oh, come on. Up we go. So, how did you find them? The fireflies? Yeah. <laughs> remember that firefly you bit and stole his gun? Yeah, I remember him. That's Trevor. I saw him walking down the street, so I tailed his ass. I follow him into this alley, and all these fireflies ambush me. They took me right to their hideout, to Marlene. Were you scared? Terrified. I thought this time she would actually shoot me. But instead she just says, what took you so long? She was expecting me. And she just made you a firefly? Something like that. That whole almost killing me thing was a test. She wanted to know I was committed. Oh. That's how we test all of our initiates. We almost murder them. And then, if they're not completely- and if they're completely insane and dumb enough to try to join a group that tried to murder them, then, uh, we know that they're our guys. That's an alarming process. Uh, yep. As we're- t speak of the devil. As we're talking about her. They wrote hero over it. Speak of the devil? She asks about you. Really? She says you remind her of your mom. Well, she'd know more than me. 
really unnerving when you say something and then the video game character says the exact line that you just said, even though it's obviously the equivalent of saying gazoon tight when somebody sneezes. Like, it's like them, it's a really natural We're response. So it shouldn't feel weird, but it still does. Anything back? Nope. Thought I saw something. Are you trying to join the fireflies now, Ellie? Who do you hang out with these days? I don't know. Someone really. What about Tino and the rest of the guys? How are they doing? Riley, those are your friends. But you talk to them. Yeah, I guess. Those are your friends. This, this perception of ownership over friendships. There might be absolutely nothing to grab in these environments, which feels really unnerving and weird. Scott was here. Robert was here. Two. Otino was here. Allie and Riley were here. Hey, so we've been here before. Have you found the light yet? Oh, har har. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend your people. So what? You buy into this whole thing now? All I know is that I'm not a soldier. The fact that you have to choose between the two is rough in its own way. Mainly because we should be focusing on fighting the infected, but I think both of these groups are interested in fighting each other. Thirty days, my ass. People are getting infected all the time. They just do a good job of hiding it. You've run into more infected? As part of my initiation, they actually made me kill this. You know, let's talk about something else. All right. Oh, that's unnerving. A skyscraper leaning on another skyscraper. Let's go climb it. Like in Cloverfield. Hooray. In their defense, I think they were in the skyscraper before it fell over. So, maybe I should join the Fireflies. Ellie, that was the first thing I asked my mom. She wants you to play for that stupid school. I'm not even supposed to come see you. Why does she care? She's worried I'll get you into trouble. Whatever. I can get into trouble just fine on my own. <laughs> oh, I know. Right, that's a complication that's worth questioning. Marlene promised to keep Ellie safe, because Marlene has known Ellie since birth. She's not just some random organization leader, and that's how they know each other. Like she actually, they, they've known each other forever, and she's pledged to protect her. And yet, she's like an seems to be an enemy of the state. If we go by Ellie's line, saying where, that that's where we learn to kill fireflies. She's currently a member of the opposing hey, organization the of Marlene's. Here. What are we doing here, Riley? I have a surprise for you. What? Is it a dinosaur? Maybe. I'll be your friend again if it's a dinosaur. You'll just have to wait and see. Fever dream. On the narrow frontier between sleep and death, the darkest thoughts are about to awaken. Fever Dream Director's Cut. Let's not neglect that detail. 